Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you listening right now. Thank you. Maybe you're Scott Hepburn. Hi, Scott. Or Jeff Wilkes. Hey, Jeff. Paley Glendale. How you doing? Or Ryan Marks. On this episode of DTNS, there was a lot of AI at Google I.O., but did Google answer OpenAI well? Plus, Comcast continues the streaming bundling craze. This is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, May 14th, 2024. In Los Angeles, I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Animal House, I'm Sarah Lane. From Columbus, Ohio, I'm Rob Dunwood. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. It's like uh, it's it's like a special crossover episode when we have all three DTNS hosts together. That's that's what Google I/O has done with to us today. Look at this. It's been a minute since all three of us yeah. have been on the show. I think this is the first time this year, actually. But for yeah. sure, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of when. Um, it's been a minute. Yeah. Christmas, Christmas, yeah. or yeah. the holiday episode. So all you people okay. who are like, "How come you don't give Google enough Tom. attention?" Look, look, look what we're doing for you. <laughs> Why are Tom and Rob ever in the same room at the same time? Huh? <laughs> With Sarah at the same. Yeah. Time. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, we got lots of Google I/O stuff to talk about. We're going to talk about it quite a bit. Let's start with the quick hits. Image sensor maker Sony saw strong sensor sales to drive a 14% year-on-year increase in revenue, though it was the first quarterly drop since September of 2020. Financial services dragged down overall profit and revenue, leading to a 7% drop for the full year over last year. Sony also missed its own lowered target of 21 million PS5 sales. It came in at 20.8 million instead. The company also announced that Hideki Nishino will take over as CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment's platform business group, overseeing hardware and third-party content. Herman Holst will be CEO of Sony Interactive's studio business group, overseeing content development, including TV and movie adaptations, and first-party publishing. They'll take over as co-CEOs starting June 1st. The U.S. will increase tariffs on a number of Chinese goods, including chips, solar cells, some medical products, and quadrupling tariffs on electric vehicles. Uh, don't forget, tariffs not only raise the price of the goods they target for import, but they can also cause the price of domestic goods to rise because there's less price competition that would keep the prices low. So it is possible that you would see higher prices for all of these kinds of goods, whether they're made in China or not. Square Enix reported that sales rose 2.6% last fiscal year, but profit fell 15.8%. This is despite the launch of Final Fantasy 16 and Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, both PlayStation exclusives. Square Enix announced a three-year plan to aggressively pursue a multi-platform strategy that includes Nintendo platforms, PlayStation, Xbox, and PCs. Uh, they didn't say that this would mean an end to Final Fantasy exclusivity to Sony. But it probably does. They also talked about emphasizing quality over quantity. Warner Brothers Discovery has been saying it'll shut down about a dozen Adult Swim-related indie games for a couple of months now. But it took its time to clarify that it will, in the end, do the right thing and return the game's rights and, most importantly, store pages to the developers. Initially, the company had said it would not transfer the games to their creators, but thankfully changed its mind. Developers could have resist, have, have restarted their games, uh, you know, reposted their games, but would have had to start from scratch on recommendations and reviews. So at least they did the right thing in the end. The European Union is following on its promise to identify new gatekeepers under the Digital Markets Act. Booking.com joins Alphabet, Amazon, Apple, ByteDance, Meta, and Microsoft because it passed the threshold of 45 million monthly active users and 10,000 or more yearly active business users on March 1st. Congrats to you, Booking.com. Look for lawsuits. The designation just means it has increased obligations for interoperation and fair play that its competitors do not. Uh, does Booking.com belong on the DMA uh, list? Booking. Yeah, apparently it, <laughs> it, it, it does. <laughs> well, uh, the bundles keep on coming, and I'm talking about TV bundles. They're all just going to try to figure out how best to sell things to us. Later this month, Comcast will offer its broadband TV and mobile customers a bundle of Peacock, Netflix, and Apple TV Plus at a reduced price. Comcast will call the bundle the Stream Saver. 
Get it? Because you're saving mm. streams. Just the one stream saver and maybe a money saver as well. The company didn't announce a price, so we don't know exactly how much you're saving at this point, but it did imply it would be a deep discount over getting the services individually. The cheapest way to get all three services at this point would cost $23 per month, and that would be with ads on Peacock and Netflix. So, you know, maybe that would work for you, maybe not. Though, Peacock is getting a price increase itself of $2 on its lowest tier starting July 17th, so this could potentially save you more money within a couple of months, even more than it might right now. Well, we'll see when it comes. Uh, the, the, this is the trend right now. I, I keep repeating this, but you know, uh, the the idea has been uh, open a bunch of streaming services to see which ones work. Try to keep your prices low to get as many people signed up as possible. Uh, then get rid of the ones that don't work, consolidate uh, with the ones that do work and start monetizing, which in some cases means you have to raise the prices because you're no longer in the customer acquisition phase. So we're going to see this for a good year or so more of these kind of bundling things. And some of them will work. Some of them won't. All of them will be trying to get you to exchange flexibility for saving money, right? Because, mm -hmm. uh, Rob, the idea here is I know you do the thing where you cancel services when you stop watching things. But if you do the bundle, if you're watching a thing on Netflix, you won't want to cancel Peacock and Apple TV Plus because you've got the bundle, right? So so they're they're targeting you. Do you, do you, feel, do you feel isolated by this? I do. In fact, I said this last week. Sarah and I were talking about this on the show last week when it was Disney um, mm -hmm. and Warner Brothers that created a, a bundle. And I will drop a service as soon as there is nothing on it that I'm ready to watch. And this just makes it more difficult for me. So I am convinced that these folks are listening to Daily Tech News Show and they know that, well, here's how we get robbed. Let's create these bundles. <laughs> I, it's, it's always all about me. But no, well, you could resist the temptation. You don't have to do the bundle, right? It's just like, and we don't know what the what the savings is going to be here, but it's, you know, is the savings worth the, the loss of flexibility? Um, it depends. If, if, the, if the hassle of canceling and resubscribing and canceling and resubscribing, and it's, it's really not a hassle. It's just there's something I want to watch, click subscribe, and then you start watching it. And then when I don't want to watch anything anymore, click cancel, and then you stop. But if the hassle becomes uh, you know, more than I can handle, or if the discount is deep enough to where it just mm -hmm. makes sense for me to get three things for one price instead of three things individually, um, we will have to see, but I, I, I'm certain, I, I know me, I will pull a calculator out to figure it out. I, I, I will do the math on this. Yeah, I, mean, I yeah. think, I think what, what will, it's not going to work for everybody because we all have different tastes in what we want to watch. But if I compare this to, you know, NBC, ABC, and CBS. Okay. Like if I just want one of those channels and this is I'm sort of talking about the olden days, uh, but, you know, stay with me for a second. One of those channels I go, oh, but there's always there's always going to be something, you know, one of the late night shows on the other channel is going to have something funny and I want to see that type thing. If you like content on Peacock and Netflix and Apple TV Plus and shows come and go as they do, especially on streaming services, you might be more likely to be like, yeah, but this is a good bundle because now Netflix has this new show I'm into, Apple TV Plus, you know, um, um, uh, yeah, uh, now I can't even remember the name of the show that I like so much on Apple TV plus severance, severance? that's yeah, okay. coming back, you know, so yeah. it's like, you know, I can kind of wait it out. This is a good bundle for me again, price matters very much so in this situation, but I, I think there is, uh, there is a, a hope of uh, all of the bundlers, the Comcasts, uh, you know, in this example, to just know that we sometimes get fatigued and go, yeah, there's something else on. Okay. Yeah, the, the other thing to remember here is this is not just a bundle of Peacock, Netflix, and Apple TV+. Plus. It's a bundle of your Comcast service. Uh, now, that uh -huh. could be your internet service. It could yeah. be your mobile service. doesn't have to be your cable TV service, but it's a way to keep you as a Comcast Xfinity subscriber as well because you're getting this deal on Peacock, Netflix, and Apple TV+. Plus. You know, If you have a chance to switch to AT&T Fiber or something like that, maybe you won't because you want to keep that bundle. So it's it's everybody trying to tie you up and, and keep you retained. Certainly why Netflix is doing it. Peacock and Apple TV Plus also need the extra subs. So it's good for them in a couple of ways, actually. Yeah. 
I don't have Comcast uh, anymore. I did at my previous residence. Um, Xfinity, best internet service I've ever had. Uh, have not gotten speeds uh, anywhere near that uh, to this day. I mean, I, I've only lived in one other place, but, but uh, <laughs> I was going to say, cause you didn't, you didn't move into After a frontier fiber neighborhood years. in Los Angeles. No, if you'd exactly. had fiber, like I used to in my old neighborhood, you, you would then probably it, yeah. have a different tune. Yeah, but, yeah. It would have been more of a one in one type thing, but, but yes, if I were to, if I were a Comcast customer and you know, they were doing other things, right. I would, I'd be totally into this. I also happen to like Peacock, Netflix, and Apple TV plus, yeah, right. you know, as, as streaming services go, they're three of my favorites. So there you go. Well, we're going to fill the rest of this show with a bunch of Google stuff. Uh, so for balance, tell us about what's going on with Apple vision show. <laughs> well, um, the good word is that Eileen Rivera and I host Apple vision show, uh, every week to compare how we think Apple's own vision is matching what we, the people want in our vision for the company going forward, products, services, software, and everything in between. It's a lot of fun. We'd love for you to join us. Applevisionshow.com is how to find us and subscribe. All right. Google I.O. Uh, went for two hours. I just want to say for the record, I did prefer the half hour announcement OpenAI gave us yesterday, at least for length. Uh, and Apple didn't do bad with their shorter announcement earlier this month. Uh, but we have a lot to get through. We're going to get through what we consider to be the most pertinent for you as a consumer announcements. Uh, and then whatever we don't get to in Daily Tech News Show, we will cover in, in Good Day Internet. So if you're a patron, uh, you'll get the full stuff. Let's start with search, though, because that is the, the big moneymaker for Google and everyone's wondering how they're going to straddle the line of continuing to make money off search while providing a better search experience using their AI chops. Uh, Google has changed the search generative experience to be called AI overviews, and it will launch to all US users starting this week. Before, you had kind of opt into it, uh, but now everybody's going to get it. It will come to more countries soon. There will be available to a billion users by the end of the year, they say. So it, it's going to keep rolling out all the rest of the year. And in a press briefing ahead of Google I.O., they didn't say this during the keynote, though, uh, Google said it will, in some cases, use generative AI to organize the search results page to do the ranking. Now, it won't do that all the time yet, but it will do that when it's, again, it, it, they're kind of vague. They said when they, they can tell you're looking for inspiration. Uh, but I, I think this is a, a test of certain categories like travel planning or restaurant choosing uh, where they're going to they're gonna change page rank. I, I, I want to go around the horn and find out what all uh, you thought was cool about the multi-step reasoning and 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 the ways they're gonna you know help you while you're you're doing your search. But I thought it was notable that they didn't once give a nod to and this will help websites and this will keep advertisers happy. This was all very much we're going to improve the search uh, experience for the end user. Rob, what'd you think? So um, I, I noticed that they didn't talk about websites. Um, specifically in content creators. So I, I'm wondering if, if Google is going to just kind of tweak and play around with it. W one advantage that Google has over open AI is that they absolutely own search. Yep. So if they are to, let's try this, let's try that. And they're pulling from their own search signals. That is going to be a boon for them because although open AI works with, with being search, just it's you know it's just a rounding error compared to the number of people that are using Google. But I did find it very interesting that they didn't mention content creators. They did not mention mm -hmm. websites at all. And the thing that I immediately thought about, well, wait a minute, a big part of Google's business is is taking money from those websites that want to advertise and get their things in the SERPs up first. So I think that they didn't mention it, but they have to be thinking about that because they can't crush one business as they're trying to build another one. Search is just too big for Google, in my opinion. I am using AI overview in Google search all the time. Um, I opted in to try it out. Well, I don't know, whenever it was first available to me a couple months ago, I suppose. And uh, it isn't groundbreaking. Um, it's not changing the search experience all that much for me. Every so often, though, the little, the little blurb at the top keeps me from kind of doing the scroll and the back and forth thing. I think that 
Google search is, I mean, pe people have issues with Google search and there are a lot more, more alternatives to finding what you need uh, from a lot of different companies these days. Google has its work cut out for it to stay top dog in that scenario going forward. AI is a big part of this, but I think we're a very long way away from people just not, you know, using Google as a verb to do all the things. I think that building AI that feels pretty seamless into an experience as an end user. I mean, we understand what Google's doing here. Most people do not care. They do not care. Yeah. And, and, and I think what was interesting is Google said, accepted that and said, look, what you want is to be able to put a complex search with a bunch of things together in, in the bar without having to know how to Google, without having to have, have, you know, Google foo, just say what you want and our AI will, you know, and we'll see how well it does, but Gemini's model will be able to break that all up and understand what you want and then give you, you know, helpful clusters, uh, organizing your complex search results. Uh, and, I would look for their other conferences where they talk to search advertisers for how they're going to accommodate people who want to drive you to their site. Uh, but I actually thought it was heartening. Uh, I'm, I'm curious how they're going to make money at it, but I thought it was heartening that at least here they said, we just want to make it better. We want to make answers to your questions better and faster. Um, and that's what they focused on. Uh, let's talk a little bit about their their big products. Google debuted Vio, a text to video model that outputs a 1080p resolution. Uh, announced Imogen Three, its highest quality image generation model, uh, with they promise improved text rendering. So it will actually, you know, put the text up that you wanted them to instead of something that is not even close. Uh, Google announced Ask Photos with Gemini, uh, so you can say things like, you know. Uh, when did my dog uh, f f first show up? Or you know what? T show me all the the photos of me at the Grand Canyon. Uh, like like complex things that it can it can search through the photos and make inferences and find. Uh, and then there was Music AI Soundbox, which they had a really impressive thing with Wycliffe Jean uh, uh, and and uh, 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 the the guy who did the opening uh, for Google. But that was mostly just like oh, it does what you expect. You tell it to make music and it does there's a lot of tools that does that project astra seemed like their answer to yesterday's open ai announcement that is a universal agent that can just look at what you're looking at respond to your voiced questions uh and and help you you know find your glasses which apparently were some kind of smart glasses and gadget pointed out uh and their demo was recorded We'll find out if it was edited uh, somehow as, as people pour over it. Uh, it wasn't a live demo like OpenAI did, but but it was kind of impressive. Uh, Rob, what, what what have these things impressed you? The the one that I liked the most was Google Photos uh, and uh, what you can do there because they gave an example of what is my license plate number. Now I tend to remember the one on my car, the one on my wife's car, but I can't remember my my kids' cars. I can't remember my you know, the, the trailer, um, you know, for, you know, for, for my dad's, but I can't remember all of them. So just the fact that I can say, Hey, what is the license plate number on the trailer? And it mm -hmm. can figure something like that out. That was really cool to me. I also paid attention to their answer to what uh, OpenAI so epically trolled yesterday by announcing mm -hmm. their stuff a little day before uh, Google IO started. And uh, so, like I said, I, I like the photos better, but Google has to win in the search area. They, they just have to. That, that, that is their core business. So I'll be very interested to see how these just natural language searches across modalities are going to work for them. Yeah, and Project Astra is coming someday. It's it's not uh, you know I think they said you know possibly by the end of this year, but it's it's not something you're going to be able to use today. Sarah, what what do these impress you? Some some of this felt very like aspirational. Google mm. is working on this. Just don't worry. We are working on this stuff. Some of it was in this part of the the uh, the keynote. I had some eye rolly moments. It's kind of some cringy moments, you know, where it's just how many times can someone say it just works so seamlessly? Mm -hmm. You go like, okay, okay, and this is yeah. just the beginning. 
Right. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, and uh, I'm not calling out Google specifically. Sure. All, com- no, all companies stuff, do this, right? but it did feel, you know, you've got the, you know, you're, they're, they're, uh, they're at the, you know, uh, at their, um, uh, I can't remember the name of it now. Shoreline. Shoreline. Yeah. And uh, which is an outdoor amphitheater. Everybody familiar with Google IO. They've been doing it there for years. It's a very large space. You got all these people on there politely clapping, you know, and it's like, if you're there, you're, you know, you either work for Google or you're really, really interested or you're a developer or that sort of thing. But some of it does feel like, yeah, yeah. Okay. But like, what, what are we really going to do with some of this stuff? Rob, Great example with the license plate. There are, I can't, well, first of all, I don't know my own license plate by heart. And every, I don't know, six months, we were talking about having to go into the DMV before the Mm. show started today. It's like, I take a photo of my license plate because I know I'm going to forget it later and I'm going to need it. And then it's like still hard to find on my phone somewhere, you know, and then I I message it to myself. And again, I'm a, uh, this is all iOS stuff, but, but uh, I do think that Google it gets into the weeds a little bit as a company of, you know, we, we, we can do it all for you. It's it, Google does. I think it really, really shines when it says you already use all these Google products. We don't all use the same Google products, but many of us use at least a few. And here's how you're just going to have that much more seamlessness with, with everyday stuff. Yeah, that's a, their big advantage, right, is uh, over OpenAI. OpenAI may be better at this. I mean, you can argue about that, but let's let's just say for the you know, the sake of the argument, what if they are? Well, uh, Google is saying, we have a bigger context window. That's the one metric we're going to pound you with. Uh, we, have, we can do 2 million tokens. And we're already everywhere you are. Right. Uh, They did a whole section on Android, which honestly was just that circle to search is getting more complex programs later this year. Uh, Oh, and by the way, Gemini is now the voice assistant there. Uh, It's going to get some context awareness so you can ask questions about a video you're watching. It could be able to see what's on your screen and answer a few more things. But that's kind of what circle to search does already. Uh, Gemini Nano is going to get some multimodality on the Pixel later this year. Uh, There's an accessibility feature called TalkBack that will get multimodal. Um, But honestly, there there wasn't a whole lot that was revelatory in Android. I feel like they kind of included Android in, in the keynote to just point out like, hey, most of the world uses this operating system. And guess what? All of our Gemini stuff is going to show up in it. Yeah, there was even the, and they didn't go on and on about this, but the example of Gemini understanding that that phone call where someone's wanting your bank information is indeed a scam or, you know, just for whatever reason, they're not who they say they are. And I think, yeah, okay. I mean, there are a lot of people who are on the lookout for this and are getting duped about this kind of stuff. It felt a little like, eh, all right. I mean, to be able to to uh, circle to search somebody's shoes in a photo and find out where I can buy them, I mean that already exists. Uh, but for Google to to get us more used to using things like that, I feel like that that's that's more everyday helpful. I kind of keep going back to the everyday yeah. helpful stuff because I think that's that's where you know if 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 I can't use Gmail anymore, what am I going to do? Like I'm going to, so make that better. Right, right. Because of that, and Tom, you touched on this. Better isn't always better. So, mm. OpenAI may be actually better at these things than Google is, but if it's good enough, and I already am in Gmail, if it's good enough, and I'm already in Google Sheets, if it's good enough, and I'm already in Google Docs, if it's good enough, and I'm already in Photos, that means that it actually may be better, even though it may not be better. Because as normal people would they're simply just not going to care it's just it's w- what is easier for them if google can get to this being commoditized more quickly than everyone else then that's how they win yeah it's the old you know the best camera is the one you have with you uh the best ai is the one that's in the sidebar of the thing you're already using right yeah uh and speaking of that google unveiled gemini pro in workspace labs shipping later this month uh that'll let you summarize emails by topic uh, Google announces that Gemini Advance will update with deeper Android integration to answer questions about videos and PDFs. Uh, there's a side panel available in Workspace next month, so you can do things. They, the big example they gave was look at my Gmail and find all my receipts and then put them in a spreadsheet. 
and the spreadsheet was created and and categorized and everything to to help you you know file your expense accounts or track your spending uh, or whatever. Uh, Gemini and Meet expanding to 68 languages, uh, and G Gmail Mobile is going to get three features particularly that summarize feature for threads that I just mentioned, uh, Q and A on anything in your inbox, which would be how you do the receipts things, and reply prompts that take in context. So in instead of just looking at what you're typing and giving you a reply, it'll take in the context of everything that you've done before, what thread you're looking at, what things you've written already, uh, et cetera. And then uh, AI workflows for documents and Gmail uh, is coming to lab users this September, uh, along with data uh, Q&A as well. Um, this is this is another example of if you're in workspace, uh, this this is going yeah. to be how you use AI. I don't know if this sways anyone, right? If I'm in office and I'm using Copilot, I didn't see anything that would make me go, mm, I need to switch. Yeah, it, it's I, I think it's it's for those of us who uh, end up uh, furiously searching for uh, receipts within Gmail um, when we have to file that expense report mm -hmm. <laughs> by the end of the year, which happens to me all the time, all the time. Uh, and again, that demo looked really great, looked very seamless. Uh, my, you know, your mileage may vary, of course, but stuff like that. Oh, I'm into it because I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. I'm not changing my kind of daily overall, well, I use lots of platforms during the day, but, but Google products are a big part of my day. I'm not, I'm not looking to shake it up right now. I would change products to not have to worry about doing expense reports. That was the bane of my existence when I traveled for work regularly. So if I were, you know, if, if I was sticking everything in, in, you know, in office and, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and co-pilot doesn't do this, but Jim and I does, I already use an Android phone. So every picture I take is already in Google Photos. I would actually switch over to this just for that one feature. Um, now that's just to me now, but but I think that you're going to smash cut to Microsoft's announcement later this month, showing them doing exactly that just to make <laughs> exactly sure Rob doesn't leave. But yeah, yeah, but, but but yeah, that that was something that is like, wait a minute, I can just say go grab all my, you know, go grab all my receipts, categorize them, do what you need to do, and give me an expense report at the end of the month. That is worth my weight in gold. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, Google also announced gems, uh, which are chat bots you can create with Gemini uh, that are personalized and have, can do distinct tasks. Uh, very much an answer to GPTs. Uh, and you have to pay to use GPTs. Uh, and obviously, you have to pay to use Google products, but there's no additional charge for creating gems. Uh, they showed off a virtual uh, work teammate. Uh, with their own workspace account that you can create and give it a, a job. Uh, pro project managers and product managers beware. Uh, it's kind of what I took when I, when I looked at this, or or at least maybe it'll make your job easier because uh, they can monitor and track projects. Third parties will eventually be able to create their own versions of this. Uh, no date on when that one is coming, though. That was very much a concept demo. Um and then the Gemini app is getting live interaction coming this summer, uh, the ability to understand video. So you, again, you can just show it a video and ask it questions about that, just like you can in search. Uh, Gemini advanced, they showed off some trip planning. And of course, that's the one with the 2 million token window uh, coming later this year, now supporting 35 languages. We're going to talk a little more about this uh, and other stuff in Good Day Internet. Uh, so stick around for that. Uh, but uh, that, that any last thoughts, Rob? Uh, on Google I.O. before we wrap? Um, they spent a lot of time talking about AI. I want to, they, they put a, a metric up at the end where I think they said AI like 120 or it might have been more than, but I believe it was like 120 times that they said it. Yeah. Um, this is what Google is now. They're an AI company. I, I don't think that anyone is making any bones about that. That's, that is what they are doing. And they are playing a bit of catch up, but I think that they are, at least at this point, focused on trying to you know, make sure that they are absolutely a player in this space. Well, Rob Dunwood, it's not often that you and Tom Merritt and I are all on the same show together, but when you're not on DTNS, at least with me, usually on Thursdays, what else are you up to? Where can people keep up with you? 
Uh, let's, you, can, you can find me over at The Tech John. That is a weekly show where myself, Tech Life staff, and Brother Tech, you know, um, Stephanie Humphreys and Terrence Gaines, we talk about the week's tech, but we do so from the lens of being African Americans and how tech affects us and disaffects us specifically. Well, patrons, uh, stick around for the extended show, Good Day Internet. Uh, we're going to talk more about Google I.O., some of the developer announcements, more about Gemini. Uh, stick around for that. Just a reminder, we record at DTNS Live Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern. That's 2000 UTC. And you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Back again with Scott Johnson joining us tomorrow. We're going to talk about casinos, but not in the way you think. Mm. Talk to you then. The DTNS family of podcasts, helping each other understand. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>